right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle, with my co-host, Matt. Tonight, we have a special guest, Coach Axel Afori, Jr. Um, he is most notably known for Team Island on social media, if you've come across it. Um, if you haven't, I really recommend that. We'll get into it here in a little bit. Uh, he's also the D.C. and defensive backs coach at Desert, Desert Vista High School in Arizona. Coach, welcome to the show. We're excited to have you. Thank you for having me. Uh, the big time on the sound effects here. Um, so, Coach, real quick, you know, I, I haven't had a young enough coach on since this has happened to talk about it real quick. But, Coach, are you playing any of the NCAA football on Xbox or PlayStation? Of course. Of course. Got to. It's coach, been a while. Who's, who are you playing with? Who would you start your dynasty with? So, I started off with uh, Oregon, Oregon State. Oregon, Oregon State. All right. Yeah. There we mm. go, man. Yeah. I just like the sports. It's in the game. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, yeah. that's great. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we we had another coach on, um, kind of an old school coach that's older, and I was like, Coach, who are you picking in NCA? And he's like, I don't play games. Oh, man. And I was oh, like, man. all right, great podcast. <laughs> um, so, Coach, uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll tell the audience kind of how I came across it. Uh, you know, I'm flipping through TikTok and, and I'm on social media a lot because we post from our account. Um, again, if you're listening, subscribe and like all of our stuff, subscribe and like our YouTube. Uh, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on TikTok. Uh, but part of that is I try to stay on just football TikTok. You know, I swipe through all the political bull crap and all that. And I come across uh, this guy, Team Island, and I'm like, I don't even know what this is, right? It's spelled E-Y-E-L-A-N-D. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what is this? And he's explaining man coverage. And I'm like, man, this is really good. Like, this is in-depth, coach good. He's talking about staying square and all this stuff, and I'm not going to get into it because you're going to talk about it tonight. And I came across it. I was like, coach, man, this is really good stuff. And uh, I reached out to you several times. I know you were in the middle of the move, but I just pestered you until you come on. So <laughs> I'm super excited to have you on tonight. Um, and kind of without further ado, let's talk about tonight. We're going to talk about man coverage and kind of your teaching progression behind it, and uh, let's see where it goes. Sounds good. First of all, I just want to say thank you for inviting me in and thank you for, you know, messaging me and giving me the opportunity to join your podcast. I really appreciate it a lot. So thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so let's roll so, into it. Your your man progression and everything. Um, you know, how do you start that? How do we how do we start teaching it? You know, do we just roll out there and do it or or, or how do we build up? Well, so it's it's when it comes to man coverage, it's very like a lot of people just think, oh, just follow your man and go wherever he goes, right? You know, so I try to break it down to make it very simple, but very effective for the kids, for the, anybody to learn it. You know, make yeah. it start it off with the eyes, right? Keep your eyes on the hips, right? I break it down a little bit more and go to the near hip because you move in with that near hip if you're protecting that leverage, right? Because if we line up inside leverage, we want to move with that leverage and protect it, right? So you want to put your, yourself in, and your body in position to stop anybody coming inside, right? So if you look at it as like, if you're looking at a big picture, you see the whole picture, you're going to end up moving more. But if you really dial in on a certain spot of the picture, you're going to take less steps, less space, you know what I'm saying? Less steps to move. So I yep. break it down from there. So first thing is we always start with the eyes, right? I mean, besides before that, actually the stance, sorry. The stance first, and then we get into our eyes, teaching the eyes where to be and everything. Then it gets to footwork. I always tell my guys and everybody who I train and everything, we press with our feet. So we're playing man, we're going to press with our feet. We don't want to just shoot our hands immediately, right? Especially when receivers, as soon as we're impressed, they're expecting our hands to show immediately, right? And receivers hate patient DBs, right? If, they, if you're a patient DB, you're already winning the game, right? So I always teach them press with our feet, stay square. That's the biggest thing is really stay square because we want the receiver to go outside our frame and take a long route to take his, to get to his uh, destination. So now then when we do that, we stay square, we're moving laterally. When we shoot our hand, now we are forcing it to go even wider, right? And then that's the quarterback's looking over there. He's like, oh, now he's, he's taking too much time in his route. Next thing you know, he's looking for somebody else. So we can do our job early, especially in the game, because he got the quarterback's worried about so many things, the pressure, the timing, all that stuff. So if we do our job early, we already went in half the battle, right? So that's why I teach, like, you press with our feet, staying square, moving laterally, kick-stepping is a very big thing. We want to kick-step to meet him at a point, not beat him there, right? So we want to deny and protect our leverage as we kick-step, and then we widen him 
and then we go from there, you know, and then we obviously keep your eyes on the near hip and keep running with them and everything. So it's, it's, it's like being a no tackle, right, Matt? I mean, coach, it sounds like he's coaching up the O line. I'm understanding this perfectly. <laughs> this <Yeah>. is great. <laughs> That's funny. <too. laughs> yeah. No, it is. And there's so much similarity in coach. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. You know, when I taught it, you know, being a guy growing up, I played corner my entire career um, up into college. And again, I, I wasn't very good, uh, but I had to do these things that you're talking about. Right. I wasn't running, you know, square, you know, in lockstep with anyone. Mm-hmm. I had to stay square and do these things and and make people widen and almost make the quarterback not want to throw my way by boring him yeah. when I was probably beat more than I actually, you know, than, than they thought I was. So I, I completely agree with everything you're saying. Mm-hmm. So. I love the way that you break it down into different pieces. Now, do you have drills that correlate with these different pieces as well? Yes. Yeah, so um, when I teach, you know, when I post my stuff on con- on social media and everything, I try to have drills. And I, when I do drills, I break down each step. So, for instance, if we work in press, instead of uh, just working just press releases, we work on drills to make us stay square, right? So we yeah. move laterally. Then uh, we take a next step, right? making sure our eyes are disciplined and we shoot our hand, working our hand and feet, you know? So I break it down each step of the press. So when it all comes together, it becomes easier, you know? So that's how I usually do it. And then on the YouTube channel, we have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, drills and workout videos and we're doing all that stuff there. So, yeah. Dang, am I not following you on YouTube yet, coach? (laughs) I just realized that I, I didn't even realize you had YouTube as well. So oh, yeah. <laughs> here we are. See, I'm still, I'm still learning. So, yeah. um, so talk about like, obviously you have those drills. I've seen you pull it. Um, when you start with that progression, that press progression, yeah. um, are you starting with like a pure footwork drill? Are you starting, you know, and I've kind of seen some of it. Can you walk me through, like, can you give me an example of three or four drills that you specifically do with those? Okay. So, um, so footwork, yeah, we we start off with footwork, and a lot of the footwork we start off is actually on the ladders. You know, we work on okay. some drills on the ladders, like one foot stabs, just staying square, and we making sure that our where our stance is low when we're doing footwork drills as DBs. So we started off with doing forward, and then we do it the same drill going backwards, right? So we have one foot stab going, uh, one foot in each ladder and back out as we're moving back, working on staying square and me keeping your feet moving right? As we're doing at the same time. So that actually works more of like a inch back technique if you need to, motor uh, mirror ter- technique, stuff like that. And then we get into the icky shuffle backwards, staying square, keeping your feet within your frame. We're not stepping out of our frame to move. And as we're doing that, keeping our feet moving one, two, one, two, in and out. You know, those are the simple drills that we do that um, could help make you stay square in your stance, stay square in your press and help your feet movement. So be more uh, comfortable playing the press technique and, um, and man. So you go from there. And then, um, so as we're doing that, then we take off the ladders. Then we just work, just have my hands guide a DB, move him side to side laterally. Then I put my hand up, he starts to kick step. So now introduce kick step, everything. So we, as we're doing stuff, we're just breaking it down little by little before we get to real live reps, right? I want them to understand the concept we're trying to do, the reason why we're doing this, why we're staying square, why are we kick stepping, why are we shooting our hands when we're in position first, you know, stuff like that. So now when they get in the game or when that live rep happens, you start to see it. And I, one thing I realized is once you do that, you start to see, you start to hear from the uh, the players that come back, like, oh man, I didn't kick step on that one, coach. Uh, you know, they started to understand, oh, I got beat because I didn't do that. You know, and that's, yeah. you, know, you know, and that's the biggest thing is because once they understand it, then they want to do it better. And they want to, you know, saying they want to be more consistent doing it. And that's a good thing. So, yeah, I, you know, just like you said, when a player comes off and you can kind of look at them and say, hey, what went wrong there? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. coach. Right. I didn't kick that for a coach. Yeah. I, I opened up the gate or yep. something like that. Yeah, it really yep. makes coaching a lot easier. And like mm-hmm. you said, if you break it down to those points and it becomes more muscle memory for them, yes. they realize when they screwed up muscle memory. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I always do this. And for some reason, I didn't do it. And they'll yeah. come off and tell you right away. And that's yeah. I think that's when you're winning as a coach that kind of, you know, we're kind of moving from the the dictatorship to the more collaborative coaching, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. and the, yeah, and the yeah. things. And 
I'm probably the slowest on that one as uh, Matt could tell most people, but I'm, I'm trying to get there slowly, yeah. but I'm, I'm very envious of coaches that can do it. So mm-hmm. Matt, did you have a question? Yeah, coach. Um, I'm an <laughs> offensive line guy. I always have been. So when you ca- say kick step to me, yeah. I'm thinking my head's back, my weight's back. I'm stepping at a 45 degree angle, keeping leverage on my guy. Mm-hmm. How can you kind of put that in terms for me? Like when you say kick step, what are those things you're looking for as far as technique from the DB? So that's a good point. So I would say for us, we're still keeping our pad level low, right? And we're keeping our eyes down on the hip as we're moving. So we want to still stay square. We don't want to necessarily tilt, right? We, should, we kind of want to stay square as we're moving. I'm, I'm, I'm out here moving. Yeah, you, you don't yeah. want to open the door, right? You don't want to open the door and give them a path. Yes, exactly. So now we're – and a lot of people – they kick. They say kicks forty five, but I start to uh, see like it's more successful when we kick twenty like at twenty at a twenty percent. Uh, yeah, twenty degree degree. degree angle. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So now there's, there's, we're actually forcing them to take an even wider release, and we're in great position to shoot our hand. Now another thing is when we shoot our hand, a lot of DBs they tend to rise, raise their hands up. I mean, the eyes up where the hand is. That we still want to keep our eyes down the hip. You know, as we're moving, so now we could still protect our leverage and read the hips and everything and mirror the release. You know, so yeah, no, I'm with you. And and if you're listening to the podcast, what I love about Coach already is he's talking about it and he's almost standing up out of his chair to do the drill for us. So if you if you want to see something funny, watch on YouTube. And I, and I'm not making fun of Coach. I, I love coaches that are like that. Like, look, yeah. I got, I got to start doing it. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about it. So, um, no, and I'm with you. You know, that was always something that we struggle with when the kid through the hand and so we 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 almost kind of used a boxing term and we were like look it's just a blind jab Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. uh to keep the eyes down on the hip and we always use the term blind because we didn't ever want them looking up just like you said because once you look up yeah you start to wander in the wilderness Mm -hmm. and so i'm (laughs) such a big believer in that so we talked about the initial press the staying square and doing all that how about drills as we transition into the route and covering it man today Okay, so now we got a, I mean, traditional hip drill, right? You As you're, you're starting side to side with the receiver, right, or a DB or whoever your partner, and now the, rece- the receivers, either we start off really slow when we do our drill, so we have them go yeah. about 50%, you know, training the eyes to see the hip drop, right? So as we're running with them, we're in our crossover run or sideways run. We're keying the near hip, and every time he drops his hip, we drop. Every time yeah. he drops us up, we drop it. So we are reacting, right? That's very important. We don't want to guess. We don't want to anticipate. We just want to react as soon as we see it. So now as we develop that, then you take it to another level. You speed it up. Then you add the break in or out, you know, and stuff like that. And then what we do is um, we I have a fifth, 5, 10, 15 rule, right? So as you're reading the, the, the receiver in his route, after he passed five yards, right, you, you kind of see, if you're looking down at his hips, you could see the lines on the field a little bit, right? So you pass five yards, we know the, the short routes is gone. So, so the hitch, the slant, right, all that stuff, the speed out. So we pass that, the hip don't drop, we transition and we're still running. Then we get to 10 yards, and that's when they're the breaking point for most routes. The You know, the post, the, the, the digs, corner routes, right, all that stuff. And then 15 really is only that comeback or fade at that point, you know? So as we transition, we're running with them, the hip don't drop a 5, 10, 15. We know 15 is either a comeback or fade. If it don't drop there, that's when we get into that lean and locate. So as we're doing that, we're running with them, everything, keeping your eyes down. And then we pass 15 yards, then we get into that lean and locate. So we start to lean a little bit, key the receiver's eyes. If you start to look back for the ball, that's when we locate and look up for the ball. And then go make the play, you know. So we, I try to break it down very simple, you know, because as a DB, you're thinking about a whole bunch of stuff. But when you really calm down and really think about it, it's just like it's simple. It's simple things that you just got to follow. But just because you're covering somebody, a lot of DBs get nervous and antsy and start to be all over the place. And then, you know, they forget about the technique. The technique's out the window. And then, you know, now it's a big, bigger problem. So. And I like, uh, you know, I was big on one thing that we talked about. I mean, this was with all guys in coverage. Now, I was a zone match guy. Mm-hmm. You know, we ran a lot of the quarters match and the rip Liz and everything. At no point in this entire conversation, I know we're talking about man, 
did you say anything about looking back at the quarterback? Yeah. Which is what I really appreciate because yeah, right yeah, yeah. Yeah. every time a DB or someone gets beat, a lot of mm. times it's because mm. the eyes are in a bad spot, yep. right? The eyes snap up to the quarterback. And I'm like, well, I'll tell you why you got beat. You're looking yep. at the quarterback, and this guy's breaking that direction. Yep. And I used to tell him all the time, if you're looking at the quarterback, all you're going to do is watch a completion. Yes. yes. So stop doing it, guys. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, get in his hip. Yeah. Because sometimes you'll be in his hip, and you can just swipe out last second. It's incomplete. Exactly. Yeah. But the, you know, everyone loves to, I'm like, you love to stare at the quarterback. I'm yeah, like, yeah. he's that good looking. Go ask him on a date yeah. now. All right. But so, <laughs> yeah. I love it. So, so you have the side by side one. Where do you yep. go after that drill? So after that, then we transition to the uh, breaking points, right? So we, when we see the hip disappear, we break it. So we react on breaking, and then depending on the coverage that we're doing. So if we have help, if we're working on trail technique, then we undercut and slip the hip, right? Playing that low hip, and yep. we just working straight man to man. We don't have help. Then we just trying to be on the upfield shoulder as we're breaking, and then reacting. So as we look back for the ball, we on the upfield shoulder. We're in great position to look back for the ball because we can still feel and still be in position to cover the receiver and then we can slip the hip if we can or we have to play through the receiver's hands and then after that then if we just work some lean and locates and just making sure they keep the eyes disciplined try to get that muscle memory 5 10 15 get into the lean and locate go up and go make the play you know so as we do it you know i love it i love the breakdown of it coach what's the i'm just gonna slide it with this question what's the, what's the hardest route to cover man to man say it again What's the hardest route to cover man to man? Ooh, so I'll say this. <clears throat> Off man is the dig. I think is the dig. Yeah. The dig, especially when they the receivers roll out of that break instead of breaking out, they just yeah. roll into it. Because a DB, if you don't weave and you don't temple your pedal, he's he's out of there. He's you're chasing. You're already yeah. in a bad position. So I definitely say the dig and press. <clears throat> Oof. Um I would say corner out. Yeah. I'll say, no, I'll say post corner. That post yeah. corner. Yeah. Because when you, I, DBs, when they, that first break, they get antsy. Oh, he goes like straight to undercut post. it. <laughs> the <eyes> back, you know? <laughs> Next thing you know, it's a corner out. Yeah. I, w- I was notorious for undercutting post routes. Yeah. <laughs> um, didn't get beat on too many corners. But when, when you're not as fast as everyone, which I was. Mm the comeback route was so hard because I was so worried about the go yeah. and running with it. The guys would sit down and I'd keep running. And I'd be yeah. like, God, I look so stupid. Yeah, yeah that's and another just, one. That's yeah. when there's the speed differential. Yeah, Like people always talk about, well, you get beat on the go. I'm like, you don't get beat on the go as much as you think because you're cognizant of the go. Yeah, You get beat yeah. on the comeback the because yeah. <laughs> you're so worried about running with that guy in the go. Yeah, he sits true. down and your ass keeps running. Yeah, <laughs> And you look like an idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I love it. So, all right, we've gone through route recognition. We've gone through on the ball, you know, press off all that stuff. Mm -hmm. How about just pure ball drills? You know, let's incorporate the ball a little more. What are you doing as far as that? Uh, So there's a lot of drills I do. So we start off with. You don't um, have to go through all of them. I'm just throwing out a couple. I got you. I I go about the main one. We start off with a simple one. Um, They all line up in one line, the back pedal. I say break the open up face um, right away. Open up towards me, throw the ball, right? Start off with that just to warm it up a little bit. Then I start putting the technique into our drill. So, like, we work in just simple press, boom, boom, get your hands, your technique that you're doing, you're kick stepping, you're running, and then you get into a lean locate, we throw the ball, stuff like that. I have some receiver drills where everybody lines up on the side of each other. Somebody's in the middle, they're distracting them, they're trying to catch the ball like that, you know. Um, there's drills that we have two DBs going at the same time and they back for their backpedaling and they're reacting off me. So I point my shoulders one way, they're breaking. The one that's a breaking towards the ball, he goes try to catch the ball. The other guys try to swipe yeah, it underneath out. The guys trying to swipe you know, at stuff it. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I try to put them in situations where it will happen in the game so they can be comfortable in the game, right? You know, a lot of times it's simple to just throw and catch the ball, throw and catch the ball. But when you add that movement, when you throw the ball deep, you know, you start to see DBs that, oh, they, they kind of struggle. Yeah. They kind of struggle trying to track the ball. They jump too early. You know, they don't jump at all. And it's just, you, you got to make it comfortable for them, right? And then we add, then we add like partner, like a receiver just jog her out and he's running with them. And then I'll tell the receiver, don't even go up for the ball. Let the DB go up for the <laughs> ball, you know? And then yeah. 
you know, how to time the jump and everything. So I try to incorporate a lot of things, just put them in situations where they even getting out the brakes, attacking the ball, you know, stuff like that. So that's how, you know. Yeah, coach, no doubt. And oh, sorry, go Matt. No, yeah. Uh, coach, as an offensive guy, play caller, looking at this wise, you know, not every team specializes in normally running a man coverage. But once you get down in that red zone and goal line area, every team knows man coverage there, right? Yep. It doesn't matter what they've done, what they've shown. They're yep. going to give you some sort of man coverage exactly. down there. Can you talk maybe about the challenges of once you get into the red zone or that goal line area? Um, what, what makes it a little bit different for you? So when it gets to the red zone and goal line area, we know that there's less space. So there's a lot of routes that they can't run down there. So we... So now it's all about everything comes up, becomes a little bit quicker, right? The ball's coming out quicker, right? It's a certain spot. It's timing is very important for the offense because the quarterback's looking for that route and it's, he's supposed to be at a certain spot immediately. So now what we're doing is as a DB, we want to make sure we get hands on the receiver. We want to get hands on him, force him, disrupt the time and everything. Now, the only thing is this, though, is the routes that we really expect is that you know, that back shoulder fade, right? That slant, right? So as a, as a defensive coordinator, as a DB coach, I always tell the guys, take away the slant because that back shoulder, especially in high school, is kind of hard. Not a lot of quarterbacks can make that make that throw, right? So we, I would live with that. If he makes a good back shoulder fade, okay, he got us that time, right? But we still got to get hands on, you know what I'm saying? The receiver still has to do his thing. And if we are disciplined with our technique, we should be fine because that that's a area where we man turn in that area. We don't really zone turn in that area. So we man turn, get chest to chest with the receiver. So now we can see the receiver break and we know the ball is going to the receiver. So now we could be in better position to play the receiver's hands. Right. So instead of doing, you know, how it is doing normal down the field, our technique changes a little bit. And that's a, a transition that a lot of DBs don't really transition correctly because they think the technique is everywhere, but they got to recognize where they're at. You know, use the end line and sideline as your help. You know, so as so that's the thing is, as DBs, we got to be able to 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 use our help, know where we at on the field, right? Get make sure our technique is very important, especially down the red line. I mean, red zone and goal line area. You know, and then read the receiver split. Right, he's lined up wide for a reason. He's lined up close, cut split for a reason. So understand that. So as the game is going. You know, we just got to clear our mind and just read our keys, you know, read our keys and we're going to be fine, you know, so. Yeah, and yeah. You, you hit on two really big things to me. You know, when I think man coverage as a, as a coach, an offensive coach, I'm thinking, A, they have the ability to disrupt routes, right? Mm -hmm. And that's yep. why a lot of people go to it, to my mind, in the red zone is to throw off that timing and disrupt routes. Mm -hmm. But you're also looking at it from a matchup perspective. It becomes a true matchup. And then, you know, how are you going to try to get your best player on who you feel is their worst player offensively and then hit your fade or your back shoulder, you know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, try to create a mismatch. So I guess both sides have to be aware of uh, both those situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you left out a couple things, uh, Coach. One of the words that you said earlier really comes to mind, even though everything's tighter and it happens quicker. Yeah. Patience on the goal line. Yes. That's yes. huge for DBs because yes. you just you get really yes. itchy and you want to jump at stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. And then the second part is that's the big cheating place for the offense. Yeah. That's when you're going to yeah. get the picks. You're going to yeah. get the push offs. Yeah. All that stuff happens down the goal. And don't look mm -hmm. at me like that, Matt. That's not that's cheating. That's where you guys cheat. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's just good strategy. <laughs> look, I was in Dilk Campbell when Notre Dame set the pick and lost the game because mm -hmm. of it. All right. It was mm -hmm. fantastic because the ref actually called it. It was perfect. <laughs> but no, that's where you also have to be cognizant as a defensive back that there's another guy next to you and man, and there's going to be pick routes. There's yeah, going to be the levels. stuff and understanding what they've run. Mm -hmm. And now they do the crap where they fast motion back and exactly. forth and get going and, and then pick off that. And it's, yeah. it's nightmare fuel. Yeah. So the ability to be patient and then just recognize patterns, I think is really important. And I yeah. think you made a good point of that mm -hmm. coach. I think the whole thing, like the way you started off patience was, yes. was the biggest thing for a defensive yeah. back and, and mm -hmm. not enough people associate that with it. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so look, I, I love the progression, Coach. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna ask you the question: Who do who'd you pull some of this stuff from? You know, 
you do good stuff and, and I like your stuff. And again, if you want to see coaches full videos, hop on YouTube, hop on TikTok. I'm not going to make him go through every little thing. That's what his content is for. But coach, you learn this at some point, probably yeah. from playing, from learning all this stuff. Who would you say is kind of like your biggest muse that you've pulled from? Uh, so I'll say this. Um, a lot of the things I, I put out and, you know, through social media is everything is, I felt like I learned from my coach, my college coaches. You know, I had a, I was blessed to go to University of Maine, had some pretty good coaches. My DB coach, he made the game so simple for me, both physically and mentally, you know. And then, um, so I'll say that part definitely from playing. And then as I was putting out content, I'm starting to see other people, you know, teach their technique and everything. And I'm starting to understand it. So biggest thing with me is, Everybody could teach a technique, but I want to find out the reason why you're using that technique. Yeah. Why, you know, the, the, yeah, okay, that technique looks cool, but why? What's the purpose of doing that technique? What are you trying to stop? You know, so as I'm doing it, as I'm pre creating a content, I'm thinking of like myself, Why? when would I use this technique? What situation, you know, and then if it works and I think it makes sense, then it's like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Let's go with it, yeah. you know? But then there's certain techniques that people are putting out that's like, ah, I don't know about that, you know, and I won't post it because mm -hmm. I never did it. You know, it was not something I experienced. So I just yeah. be like, okay, you know, so I just f find ways to post things that I know I could, I've done it before, experience it, that makes sense. And that's simple just for people to learn, you know. And then, I mean, there's so much of different other DB coaches and uh, social media guys that posting a lot of good stuff, all eyes DBs. It's a great one. DB Sensei is another good guy that I um I ask a lot of questions. We go back and forth sometimes with some stuff. He sees some stuff that I was posting. He's like, ah, why are you posting that? And I explain. He's like, all right, that makes sense. <laughs> I see some stuff, and you know, and then we go back and forth with that. But yeah, so those two for sure. Um, flight, flight skills, another guy. Um, there is to run it up. There's a whole bunch. Oh, uh, Oliver Davis. You know, there's a whole bunch of people. But yeah, so. Yeah, you know, and it's, you know, that's kind of how we got started, right? We, I, you know, I've always been a big Twitter football coach, and I'm going to use that term lightly because a lot of people get all riled up about it. But, you know, I learned a lot of being a DC from Twitter mm. and through meeting other coaches on Twitter and just like you're saying, deeming them and talking with them and building relationships. Yeah. And now I have those guys, just like you're saying, when I have a question, I can go to them right away. Yeah, you know, yeah. the other day. I was looking at something on, you know, Michigan, right? They're bringing five, and instead of running trap, they're also running quarters a man down. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of looking around. I'm like, how do people do this? Like, what are the rules for the two underneath guys? Yeah, yeah. Is it like the hot coverage, you know, like the fire zone hot stuff? And so, of course, you know, I got I got right to my buddy, Cody Alexander. And I'm like, hey, Cody, you know, oh, yeah. DM him on Twitter. I'm like, Cody, yeah. what are the rules on this? And he's like, <clears throat> you know, oh, it's, uh, I forget what he said. It was like hook vision. Mm. And he was like, Oregon has a term for it. They call it spot. And I was like, perfect. Like, great. I was just looking for something little like that to try to understand yeah. it. And it's really cool to be able to ask that question instead of just being like, well, who do I call? What do I do? What do yeah. I go to? Yeah, yeah. And when I was early on in my coaching career, like, I didn't know how to find those answers, right? We mm -hmm. were, we waited all the way until clinic season. And then if you showed up to the clinic and no one taught it there, <laughs> I yeah. who do I ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, so that's been the advent of social media, I think with young coaches has been a huge thing. Now, look, it's probably jacked up the ego of a few young coaches. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that young anymore. So, and my ego has always been big, so it never affected me. Um, I've always been a, a maniac, but I think it's been a really good advent of stuff like that. And I, I like the way you're talking coach, right? You just named off like 13 people. Yeah. yeah, I know. And that's the same. I am. I am yeah. constantly consuming content around my regular job. My CEO is yeah. listening. I do my job nine to five mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. um but after that yep. it's football right it's it's guys like you and i can't tell you how many of your <clears throat> your stuff on tiktok that i'm bookmarking and saving when i can and all this stuff because i'm like look this is the wording i want to use i you mm -hmm. know i love the way you word things Appreciate and it. It, it is i'm not gonna lie a lot of it's similar to the way i word things so that's probably why i like it right a little bit of ego there but mm -hmm. <laughs> i i like the way you you have some terminology and some things you talk about i'm like oh i like that i gotta steal that so i have to bookmark yeah. it and uh, that's how i become a thief right matt yeah <laughs> <laughs> We're the we best thieves in the world. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, that's how this podcast got started, right? We hope mm -hmm. to be the a resource for people to come to. We hope if someone was wanting to learn man coverage, they 
listen to our podcast and hopefully we turn them on your YouTube channel and all that good stuff. So yeah. by the way, if you're listing his YouTube channels in the description, we're going to put it down there. So uh, make sure you go over and subscribe to his as well. Uh, he's on right Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all that stuff. Didn't yeah. even realize you had a Twitter either. I've been doing a really poor job, coach. <laughs> Just following you on TikTok. I got you on all the socials now. So I've been slacking Matt. on Twitter. <laughs> What's that? I've been slacking on Twitter. I need to step that game up a little bit. Yeah, you got to find one of those ones that like upload. You know, Twitter's problem because it's got to be a different resolution. Mm, yeah, right? You yeah. shoot all the vertical video and then yeah. you go to that. So, yeah. Matt, Coach, did you have anything we... else I can tell? <laughs> yeah, can we see your shirt? <clears throat> oh, is yeah. that a specific for the island? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, I love look at it. that. It's the Drake That's beautiful. Version. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Coach, Coach where, where can we get that shirt? So if you're listening, it says if you're reading this, you're lost on the eye land. Oh, Love yeah. it. Love it yeah. to put an impression on the kids. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you're doing some great stuff, Coach. Appreciate you. I Thank you. I, what we used to call it at Oviedo, Matt, Misfit Island was ours. Oh, yeah. Because we just had a bunch of misfits. So it was just <laughs> Misfit <laughs> Island. So it's brilliant. So, Coach, I, you know, we've gone through all this stuff. You know, we've talked about the man coverage and everything. How about, you know, you just talked about whether you have a post safety or not. I'm sure you have a few extra drills. So let's go to like cover one. I have a post safety. How mm -hmm. do some of those drills differ? Because I know the leverage is going to be different. Obviously. Yes. Yeah. So how I see it is um, we're just, we're just a leverage. So the slot guys really is we're using a post safety as a help. All right. So yeah. as a free safety, your main immediate threats are always going to be the slot guys. Then we branch off from there as you're reading the quarterback. So we adjust your leverage outside shade, right? And then we want to use our help. So I, when I say this, I, I got to be careful explaining it to them because a DB, when he say you got help in the post, next thing you know, he's two yards away from the receiver and he's running free, you know? So you got to yeah. still be attached to the hip, right? Still be attached, still stay in phase with him. But we're just going to play outside shade. And then we're going to be um, make sure we use our help or the safety. So there's times where the safety's not going to be there. So a yeah. lot of times I tell the guys like, hey, play this like there's nobody there. Like you don't have help. If we do have help, it's extra. You yeah. know, it's a bonus. So as we're doing drills, there's days where, hey, we're working cover one, play outside shade. And we'll do one-on-ones. I tell the guys, sometimes even when we do one-on-ones against the offense, I put a safety, a free safety right in the middle of the field. Hey, we play, play outside shade, cover one, just read the quarterback. So yeah. as he's getting his drive, you know, he's working. So we work in uh, the safety, getting his eyes and pedaling and breathing and everything, reading the quarterback, and then he's trusting that his teammate's going to be there, right? If his teammate's not there, you still got to make the play. So you got to make sure we use that. And then for drills, we just start off with just simply changing the leverage, starting outside. This, everything still kind of be the same. You still got to – and I tell him to work half the man yeah. as we're playing leverage, right? We're not looking at the full body, just half the man. Cut the receiver in half, read that near sh shoulder. Get hands on that near shoulder. Uh, sorry, read that near hip. Get hands on the near shoulder, and then be able to run with them, right? So as we're doing that, and then if we are in position, right, we got somebody over top, we can slip the hip inside, right? Because we yep. can use the safety over top. So as we're doing that, you just got to make sure we explain it. And you know, as I've been coaching for a while, you know, especially uh, these past few years, I've started to realize how a lot of kids don't really have the um, the football IQ to see, to understand coverages, right? To understand they don't the watch game. football, coach. Yeah, they exactly. watch highlights. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so now there's another aspect is you just got to break it down, understand, hey, you got somebody there. We, this is why we're playing outside leverage, right? Yeah. And then we go from there. And then, I mean, the corners wise, I kind of just tell them to still play a man. Like, you don't yeah. have help. You know, that's a far, not a lot of safeties can make that, that play side to the sideline. So, you don't really have help. If you do get help, that's a plus. And a good safety, if he's reading a quarterback, he'd be he could be close enough to make the play or make that play. You know, yeah. but it's just I just tell him that hey, play like you by yourself. A corner, you always gotta play man like you by yourself. You know, so Yeah, we going. went obviously people I've learned from a lot, a lot of saving influence, we use those divider rules, right? If he was inside the divider. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people do squeeze formations for the corners. All right, you yeah. play outside and low, right? And it's yeah. just like you said, where's my help? Yeah. Well, he's inside and high, coach. Great. Then you play outside and low. Mm -hmm. And right, anything he breaks outside, you now immediately have to get on top. Yes, exactly. Yep. Anything inside, you ride that hip right into the safety. And just like yes. you said, you can undercut any in-breaking route. So yep. the mm -hmm. dig, the Y cross, all that stuff, you know, yep. get underneath and let's, let's go try to make a pick. Yes. Because exactly. you got help. 
Yeah. If it's an outside breaking route, you better, you better be, be a there. little yeah. less aggressive yeah. because yeah. if you miss on that, mm-hmm. they're striking up the band, right? Yeah, yeah. You got problems. <laughs> You're gonna so. be right next to me. <clears throat> yep, and that's that's exactly just the way you say it, coach, is, is understanding it with kids. And sometimes it is, it's breaking down like, hey, turn around, where's your help? Mm-hmm. And, you yep. know, they'll be like, well, he's in the puck. No, what is that? Oh, it's mm-hmm. inside and high. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's why I say it 50 times over and over and over. Because just like you said, like, yep. I need it to be muscle memory, you know, with three minutes left in the third. Mm-hmm. Not, hey, coach, I know it at 315 on a Wednesday. No one gives a <laughs> shit when you know it on a Wednesday, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Right. No one's out of practice besides us. Everybody yeah. else is there on Friday night critiquing like the best. Mm-hmm. Of them. Um, and no one coaches football like the people in the stands, Matt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, coach. So uh, look, we went through, we broke it down. You know, we, we don't want, we didn't want this to be a long episode. We want to focus purely on man coverage. Are there any other points that we want to touch on there as far as that, as we wrap up the episode? And then I have a couple other questions after that for you. But. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't really talk about off man, but oh yeah, time... sorry. I, you know what? Let's rewind. We're well, not yeah. going to slow this down. <laughs> off man, we have not talked about that yet, yeah. which is a really important piece because if you can play off man, yes. you really mess with the offense. So yeah, talk a yeah. little bit about off man. So um, we start off regular alignment. So we do seven by one, one yard inside shade. Now that adjusts from the receiver's alignment, right? Yeah. So if he's, I can explain if he's closer to the quarterback. Really close, and you adjust your outside leverage, right? And um, as we're pedaling, right, you take your re-steps, right? Take your re-steps. So we're reading the QB steps, the QB drops, right? So if now a lot of people don't really get in sh- uh, under the center anymore. It's all yeah. shotgun. So the ball's presented right away, shoulders pointed towards you. We as we indicated that it's a quick game, so we're expecting some type of short, quick route, right? Now. This is very important. So as we're reading the quarterback, a lot of DBs keep their eyes on the quarterback instead of transitioning after the restep, get back on the receiver, right? So a lot of times, this is a technique that you got to be disciplined with them, right? You got to be disciplined. They have to understand that after you get your resteps, after you get one, two, I snap right back to the receiver. Because if it doesn't, you're going, the receiver's running away from you. You don't even know where the receiver's at. Next thing you know, it is a touchdown. So I always explain to get your re-step. So if you're doing a walk or scooch, right, you do that, Get your, snap your eyes right back to the receiver and decide, look at him and re- read where he's breaking at. So we break, it's always going to break to the upfield shoulder and off man, because if it's a double move, we got to be in position to at least collision the route yep. and run with him, right? So that's the thing. So off man is, is really, it starts with, it's really, di- you got to be disciplined with your eyes. If you're not yep. disciplined with your eyes, it's, it's going to be very tough. Right. So understanding that. And now if it's not a read, I mean, a three step read or anything, then we transition, get the eyes back to the receiver. We start to pick up our pedal. Right. We don't want to stay in our walk pedal as we're covering the receiver. Right. We got to speed up our pedal and stay square. Right. So you want to stay square as you're pedaling. And then if he starts to stem us, you want to weave instead of opening up. If you weave, you can stay square. You can break. You, you open yourself available to break at any angle. But yeah. If you open up early, now you're limiting yourself to one way, right? So, and you got to understand when the receiver breaks your cushion, right? So a lot of times when receivers are running their routes, a lot of DBs open up too early. And next thing you know, he's breaking away from us and everything. So you got to know your cushion. So I always teach my guy arm, guys arm and a half away or two to three yards, depending on how fast you can snap your hip and run with them, right? So as we're doing that, you work in that, and then um, you get into that hip pocket and ready to run with the receiver, right? So that's what, and a lot of times when people open up, they start to like kind of chill to open up. No, you got to snap that hip and get ready to go because he's running full speed, ready to get to his spot. So you got to be able to open up, get to the hip, and run with him. So, yeah, coach, so you talked about the slow pedal and the scooch, mm-hmm. and uh, this is how I know we're getting into DB talk here because yeah. we're dropping <laughs> scooch, which I love. <laughs> which one? do you prefer or do you not care? It's just based on the player. Um, So I, I kind of go based on the player, really. The way I see it is if you make the play, if you're in great position, whatever works for you works for you, right? Yeah. I um, I, I don't want to try to tell, hey, you got to do this, you got to do this. And it, sometimes some people might not be comfortable with it, you know? So I always say, hey, if you want to scooch, you can scooch. If you want to walk, you walk, but you better transition fast if he, you know... <clears throat> 
because if you scoot, you at least you're giving ground a little bit to yeah. to to react. But if you walk, some people just literally just pick their leg up and put it right back down. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. so <laughs> you gotta you gotta move and give a little bit of ground. So if you're doing that, you better be able to transition. If it's not a quick <laughs> game, get into your pedal fast and ready to go. You know, so that's how I see it. Uh, preferably me, like personally, I like the scoop. <clears throat> I like the yeah. scoop because now I can get out when I see it and really put that foot down and drive on it. But, you know, whatever works best for everybody, you know, is, is whatever is good for you. So that's how I see it. Yeah, I was big on when we did single high coverages rotation, we did a lot of scooch. Mm -hmm. um, except I had one kid that was so good at it. We just did a flat foot read with him. He would oh, flat yeah. foot, collision, and ride to the safety every oh, time. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, man, this kid's money. Yeah. Shut down every slot. Yeah. Never got beat. They wanted to break outside. He was so good at breaking off flat foot. Mm. But I've never had a kid like that other than that. And he was like the most unassuming kid. He was not the kid that was like the three or four star. Oh, wow. He was like, you know, now don't get me wrong. He was a good athlete. He, yeah, he ran yeah. track. He did all yeah, that. Yeah. But he was not this highly talented kid. But boy, yeah. he could flat foot read and collision and run. And I'm like, yeah. oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> Then yeah. we had another kid who's now a senior. He's a four star somewhere else. He had to hmm. scooch. He was not going to handle it flat footed. Yeah. So yeah. it's so funny what kids can handle what. Mm -hmm. um, and it, just like you talked about, go back to an earlier thing. Some of my least athletic kids were my best pressers in the history of, of me coaching. Yeah. And some yeah. of my most athletic kids, I'm like, just play off. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you suck yeah. at pressing because you're too antsy and you're trying to press with two yep, hands. Yep. And you're like, just go play off. I'm tired yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Love it. Matt, did you have anything else? I know you, you unmuted your mic there for a second. You looked excited. No, no. You guys are off in your DB land, and I'm uh, I'm sitting here drawing up. I started drawing up stuff to, you know, okay, what can I do to a post corner? How can I get a dig route involved? You know? So this is uh, – Axel, this is – this is Matt. When we do these podcasts, he writes crazy amounts of notes for everything. Oh, right. Even though he has access to review all these, he yeah, writes yeah. them in real time, which cracks me up. I got, um, I got, I got notepads on top of notepads that I'll never read again. Yeah. yeah, he just, he just moved, so he's all excited. He's got his little podcast room now, so he's got me beat because I'm still in the loft. But so that's off, man, coach. I, I love it. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. I love mm -hmm. that we brought up scooch and slow paddle mm -hmm. and how important that is in, in tempoing it. Um, real quick. Yep. Talk to me about speed turning. Oh, okay. So. Because that was I, my favorite thing to do as a yeah. DB that got beat a lot. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say this. Speed turn is, I t tell them, it's emergency only. Yeah. When the receiver gets to your blind spot and you can't see him, speed turn. And that's when you speed turn. There's times where DBs <laughs> are speed turning just because it looks cool. You know, and they catch him out of position, everything. So I always say if he gets to your blind spot, that's when you use a speed turn. So we and also do drills to uh, to put them in a situation where they get to the blind spot so they get used to that movement. Yeah. Because you don't want to put them in a the game and they don't even know how to properly speed turn. The next thing you know, they're turning way too slow. They're taking bad angles and everything. And I always tell my guys, when we speed turn, we want to speed turn, just try to stay on top of the route. Yeah. Just, because now if he does break in or anything, we stay on top. We at least are in position to make the tackle into the speed turn underneath. And the next thing you know, we're chasing. You yeah. Know, so, I was, so the keys with that is just snapping your head around, right? That's, snapping your head that's around, it, right low. There. Yep. yep. If you can't snap your head correctly, it does not matter. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's the whole key. Yeah. <laughs> the DBs that had slow heads and you know the slow at turning their head, I was like, don't yep. speed turn. You, yep. you're not. It's never gonna work, man. Yeah, exactly. Like, coach, okay, no, you can't. Just use another tool. <laughs> <clears throat> now I'm with you. I, Kind of like you're talking, we used to say, like, give them tools right in the toolbox mm -hmm. and say, like, mm -hmm. look, these tools can be used in this situation. Yeah. But use the one, like you said, that you can do. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. some kids can slow pedal and some kids yeah. can scooch and some yeah. kids can speed turn and some yeah. kids just need to stop and open. And it, mm -hmm. they're yeah. they're going to pivot better. So Exactly. Um, Matt, we had a kid at Oviedo. He's a terrible speed turner. Um, maybe he listens to our stuff, Amante. But he's a basketball guy. He's very good at pivoting and opening. Mm, yeah, yeah. So he couldn't speed turn yeah. worth a crap, but he could pivot and open really yeah. well. And he there was better, go. he was quicker at doing that than he was speed turning. Yeah. And yeah, so, speed uh, wasn't in his vocabulary though. No, <laughs> speed, he was not a fast kid, but he was a decent safety for us because he could oh, he was he great. Was athletic yeah. and could do some things. So yeah. <clears throat> I love it. Mm. All right, coach. So any other closing points on man before we get to our our typical questions that we ask every coach? I mean we Cash technique, we didn't really go about that, but 
you know, we, <laughs> Wait, let's go, let's go. Yeah, cash. cash technique. So, uh, cash technique, we're, I tell my guys like, Hey, we want to be in position to get hands on and ride with the receiver. Right. So yeah. you want to split the receiver in half, right? Make sure you protect your leverage. And this is where we use cash technique and cover one, where we have help or when we send in the house and cover zero. We're yep. taking away the inside. We're getting hands on, you know, and trying to force the outside throw because that's a harder throw for the quarterback with pressure in his face, right? So we're sitting. We're not giving ground, but we're having our feet moving. We have some type of movement in our feet. If it's foot fire, your peer step, press step, something, your feet is moving and getting ready to move laterally to get hands on the receiver, right? So we don't want to give ground, get hands on them, right? We go try to get two. We try to shoot two to one to none. Right. As we, he's getting out of our frame. Right. So Coach, two, uh, slow down, explain the two to one. And nine. I got it. But some people yeah, won't better no, listen. My fault. Yeah. yeah. So basically, if a receiver is running at you and he's head up to square with you, you can shoot two hands. Right. Once he gets outside your frame, then it turns to one as we're controlling him and we're transitioning and running with him. And then as we're running, it gets to none. So if he does, there's times where it might just go to one because he's getting out of your frame as he's releasing. So you shoot one or there's times where he's just running away from you and you just got to go and get yeah. to that hip, right? So that's the two to one to none. So two hands is always when we're square with the receiver, head up, right? As he gets out of that frame, it gets to one and then to none. Yeah, no, I love that. Mm -hmm. Where do, Where's your alignment normally on your catch state technique? Is it just by position or do you guys normally have like a yardage you want your guys at? Um, So... I try to tell them about five. Some kids, um, five, I, I kind of can push a little bit so they're more athletic. The more athletic kids, they understand it more. I can have them line up at six and then on the snap show up at four, right? Yep. Give them a little surprise, right? Um, but usually around five is by my ideal alignment, five inside shade or outside shade, depending on the help we have or the coverage or the, the play that we're running. So, yeah, five yards freaks out wide receivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're, it's kind of that no man's land, and then they yep. don't expect you just to sit there and you're there, and they're like, where, where do I go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, because if they haven't predetermined in their mind, sometimes it catches them in between steps, yep. and, and it really does, it brutalizes them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's that's a good point. Um, and then the other thing that you were talking about on there, as you talked about your, you know, two to one to none. Yeah. You know, and, and this is something I'm sure a lot of guys know, but if you're a young coach, I do want you to hear Coach, I noticed you, you're always talking about the, you know, the way I phrase it is the offhand jam. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to jam with the offhand and not the direction that they're going? All right, Greg, that's a good one. So <clears throat> the reason why we want to use offhand is because we don't want to lock our hips, right? So if we use the onhand jam, right, and he's going this way, we're locked. Our hips are locked. Now we we just gave the receiver a couple of steps. But if we use the offhand hand, we can kick step, right? We're still able to open our hips. We kick step, force them wider, and then we can run with them a lot fat better, right? But yeah. if you choose the wrong hand or if he knocked that hand down, correct? Yep. he's out of there, you know? Yeah, if he slips or rips you when you use the play side yeah. hand, meaning if you're listening and you're not quite sure what we're saying, if I'm a DB, I'm facing the wide receiver, and he is breaking like slant to my left, if I go to jam with my left hand, yeah. And he swipes my hand away or rips me really hard, and I lose any kind of balance. Guys, he's 88 and out the gate. Yeah. It's strike up the band. Mm -hmm. If I press with my, or I jam with my right hand, I am now working the direction with him, like Coach said. My mm -hmm. leg, you know, I'm not locked up. And if he swipes that away, no big deal. I just, yeah. right, I replace my hand and I keep exactly. going. But once you kind of use that on hand arm, and it's a struggle. And that's one thing I've seen in the modern game. A lot of TVs mm -hmm. are doing that. Yeah, And it just drives me nuts. I'm yeah. like, why would you, you know, like, yeah. don't press with that hand. Exactly. You're just setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I think the threat of jamming is better than jamming. I'm, I'm a yeah. little old school in that. And mm -hmm. I get in arguments with people. I'm like, if you could sit at two yards and just threaten to jam, I bet you would screw up wide receivers more than actually yeah. jamming yeah. them. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they do all those weird releases where they like back up and they yeah, cross yeah. over their feet and you can just stare at them looking like yeah, an idiot. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> Um, I hate offensive guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Especially you, Matt. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> love it. All right, coach. I'm going to ask yeah. you one more time. And I love that you keep coming up with techniques. Yeah, so nah, feel free to do it. Any other it. man techniques yeah. that we need to be thinking of. I think that's it. We covered it. We covered it. I love it. <laughs> coach, I love it. And, and look, I was not going to determine how in-depth you wanted to go. I know you create content too. So we appreciate yeah. you sharing everything on mm -hmm. here. So now I'm going to ask you our, our question we ask every coach. And this okay. does not have to be an on-field thing. It can be anything. 
Mm-hmm. What is the coolest or most unique thing that a team you've been a part of does that maybe not a lot of other people or no one else does? Oof. Oof. And all your years of football, you can pick anything. <clears throat> Damn. And while you're thinking, me and Matt will, will kind of talk, so we always give people time. Okay. You know, Coach, <laughs> most of the things we hear are not football things. They're culture things or something fun and all that. But, um, okay. but we'd love to ask this question because we get a yeah. unique answer every time. Oh. <clears throat> We rack, I love when we rack people, Matt. It's the best. I get so stumped. It is. <laughs> it is. And, but you always get a good answer out of it. <clears throat> Even it's, and it always comes back to the simple things uh, that you do as a coach, you know, and, uh, you know, what or you're doing for your players. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's always the memorable things, right? You don't always yeah. remember the on-field stuff. Nobody remembers that Wednesday practice. <laughs> you know, everybody remembers I, doing something fun. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> I'll say this. Um it's, it's it's when I played, but it's something that we used to do to oppose the team whenever they came to our 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 home place. So we used to uh, <laughs> we used to stick them in the ice hockey rink for for yeah. That's where they go for halftime and and pregame at Maine. So it's already cold there, you know. So we used to do that all the time. It's kind of funny to <laughs> to realize, that. <laughs> yeah. So that's where they were used to you know halftime and everything. That's where they'll be at, and um. Yeah, that's that's one thing that definitely stood that's out brutal. for me. That's yeah, brutal. Coach, yeah, I'm yeah. from Florida, and my freshman year I played in southwest Virginia, which, by the way, isn't even that cold for most yeah. people. <laughs> and I remember my first snow game, people were like, how do you feel? I was like, I'm moving home tomorrow. Yeah. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. <laughs> I was borrowing Under Armour. I had, like, you know, people's – you know, this is when, if you're, if you're younger, you won't get this. Under Armour used to be, like, the only – undershirt right you know before mm-hmm. then we yep. had the cotton t-shirts and we cut them off right yeah. here um no one gets that unless you're old enough i don't know how old you are coach but you know in pop corner we used to always have the cotton t-shirts yeah, yeah yeah and i was borrowing people's under armor i was borrowing hand warmers you know we had like the mike linebackers going out there shirtless he's like yeah. what's wrong with you <laughs> That's i'm like good. shut up <laughs> kyle i don't know if you remember this i know you actually i know you do remember this but coach we got we're down here in florida we get a lot of pre-game rain right mm. in august it's going to happen games are going to get delayed especially in in august september and um one of the schools we were at we uh we didn't have a visitor locker room kind of like you guys sending them into the hockey but if there was no lightning we didn't provide a place for them they could stand out in the rain and hang yeah. out and we'd play the we'd play the hokiest country music we could while they stood out there in the rain and <laughs> stared at each other and uh it, it worked pretty well yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a little, that's a little worse, but Just yeah. Drained them. Also, yeah. in all fairness, in that school, to get to our home locker room, we had to walk about uh, three miles yeah. to get there. So it, was it wasn't bad. like we stayed yeah. super dry either. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I stayed on top of the press box that entire time, anyways, because I'm a psychopath. <laughs> so I wanted to watch the way they were reacting to see if it would help us in the game. And Matt's like, You're really going to sit out there in the rain? I'm like, Yes, yes, I yeah. am. So. <laughs> Love it. All right. So, you know, if you're still, if you're still on, listen to us, we appreciate you hanging out again. Um, coaches, all of this stuff, right. Is everything at team Island. Yep. At team and it's E Y E L A N D. All right. Okay. Team Island. So if you're tuning in uh, and you want to go there, he has uh, a bunch of drills, a bunch of tape, all that good stuff. So go follow his social media, give him some love and, uh, and learn something from coach because I, I know I have, I watch his videos all the time. I like them all the time. Hey, Coach, I'm just super glad that you came on. I only had to bug you 1,200 times. Uh, I know you were in the middle of the move, so I know yeah. I know you weren't doing it on purpose, but I was like, yeah. I'm going to keep bugging him. I want him on the show so bad. And uh, so a lot of people, even Cody Alexander said something about you. We were talking about you as well. Oh, wow. So there's there's other guys out there talking about you, so you're That's doing crazy. a good job. Wow. Um, so, Coach, we appreciate having you on. And, uh, you know, if um, – uh, sorry – if you're out there and you need to get a hold of him, uh, you can probably DM him or reach out on his social medias. If not, you can reach out to us and we'll get the question to coach. Again, you can reach out to us at the board drill, uh, board drill dot. God, I can't even do anything tonight. It's the board drill at gmail.com. And again, if you're interested in written content, uh, who knows, Matt, maybe we can convince coach to do a little written content with us. Maybe um, yeah. you can go to the board drill.com, read all of our written content. All of our podcasts are on there. And soon to be some new stuff. Um, so I'm going to tease it a little bit, not tell anyone what it is, but we got some new stuff releasing very soon on the boardroom.com. For me and Matt signing off, Coach, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you guys. Thank, appreciate you. You, Thank coach. you, Coach.